Hey, good morning, guys. It's Sunday morning, December 18th, 2016, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes and give you a couple of updates. So what we'll look at uh, this morning, spend a few minutes on, is uh, we'll take a look at our weekly stats. The new trade that we put on in uh, Delta Airlines, the little short bet that we have, uh, I'm going to introduce you to... Uh, the top and bottom picker scan that, that I've been working on for several weeks and uh, finally have a penny stock scan that uh, that we can play around with so let's get right to it alright first thing we want to look at is the uh, is the stats for the week this is our weekly levels just to update you on those so we've been tracking these real time for 23 weeks of course I have years and years of data that essentially say the same thing but we just We'll keep tracking these in real time. I use them in my trading all the time when I have strangles on. Uh, and we have a play this week uh, because of these, and I'll explain that to you in just a moment. So right now, uh, first level, which you guys know is one standard deviation. Second level, you guys know is two standard deviations. So w right now, what we've uh, the stats we have indicate that the S&P closes inside one standard deviation roughly 91 percent of the time uh, that's a very good um, a very good stat to play off of so I've you know we get just a little bit of bump in IV and I'll be able to tighten my weekly play up to around those one standard deviation levels ZB's uh, 60 percent of the time they close inside one standard deviation you guys can see they're all in the 90s two standard deviations it's just and what I want to hammer home is the fact that all of these percentages that you see in the option models, all the deltas you see, they're all theoretical. But look how they play out. I mean, these are these two standard deviations are roughly what is that? Ninety-five point three percent of the time, the two standard devi the theoretical two standard deviation move is supposed to close inside that level. Well, look how it's playing out in real time. Um, there's those option statistics actually work guys they really do uh, it's just ugly when they don't work um, okay so uh, crude closes inside um, one standard deviation 65 percent of the time the dollar and gold inside one standard deviation 69 percent of the time so we've got an interesting setup in gold that I want to try and take advantage of and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute let's go right into uh, taking a look at our uh, the latest trade that I put out which was a short play on Delta Airlines so what what got me into this trade was uh, when I was tweaking my my model the other night I ran the scan of course I had you know several stocks to pull from um, you just have to cipher through the the scan list and see which ones you'd like I like this one for several reasons uh, first I'm going to show you is what my top and bottom picker actually looks like when it's uh, uh, when it kicks in. Now I've I've always had a decent bottom picker model, but I've had the top picker has always been very subjective. It works when you got markets that rock back and forth. You know our S and P, the stock markets haven't rocked back and forth in a, in years. You know like they normally do. Uh, you know back in years gone by. So. Anyway, uh, here's what it looks like. So let me go over here and uh, pick up a drawing tool. We'll take an arrow. So I'm going to walk back from the left-hand side of the chart and just show you. I'm not going to look at the, the chart prices. I'm going to be looking at my models just to highlight. So you know, we get into an area there. These are the confirming Somewhere right in there is a good area to take a short bet on. Now you go up here and look at the price, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, these are easy to pick out because, hey, just, you know, look, it just careened right down afterwards. So, <clears throat> But just look at every time um, that was a top. So now we get, get to a bottom. What we're looking at, we've got a, an entire area right here in this this indicator that says you're potentially in a bottom but we need to narrow it down a little bit more so that's when we call on the more accurate indicator 
we want to wait until both of these both of these indicators are at the extreme at the same time. This one doesn't cross over, doesn't touch that lower threshold to right in here. At the same time, this one peaks. So this area right here is high probability uh, extreme down. What we want to see is a little bit of white over here to confirm that we're, we're actually into it. So you can see right there, uh, bottom is picked. We get start getting momentum back into it right there. So, you know, in this area right here, you know, you would probably, within two bars of the low, you're trying to put a, a bullish position back on. You know, just walking forward, what I'm looking for is over here, you see we get above the, uh, the bands over here. We stay above the bands for an incredibly long time. So what we're looking for is for confirmation here. So now we start. You can see, of course, we're in a huge up move in this market. So this area right in here is where we want to try to pin it down. What really keyed me into this up move is... You know, you could have probably started building a short position right in here. You would have been justified in doing so, but we're not in a normal up move right now, guys. There is nothing normal about this most recent up move in the stock market and in stocks individually. What tipped me onto this one was the divergences that are happening as are unfolding as we're watching this market trace the new highs. So we have uh, lower highs here. We have lower highs on the momentum indicator and lower highs right here, higher lows here as the market is making. So we've got divergences everywhere. The other thing that tipped me onto this one that uh, said if I was going to put any money on a top, because uh, you guys know how bullish I am, is I better have a very good reason. Now I want you to look at the, uh, at the support or the resistance level. It pinged to the penny this high right here uh, close to it it was a high of 52.76 52.77 the high back in here so hey that's all I need to see that's that's a uh, for me with all these other um, models saying that uh, you know you're in that area if you're gonna take a short you need to take a short now if or you're never gonna take a short so hey uh, I think it's worth a bet, so I put the uh, Delta Airline trade on. I sent that out to you guys via email, and uh, I'll just follow it up, you know, as we move uh, as we move forward. So let's uh, let's take these off. Let's remove all the drawings. All right, let's take a look at the uh, gold market. Um, all right, so what I want to key in on is the uh, one standard deviation levels right here, right here. All right, this market tends has uh, since I've been monitoring it. Now I don't have decades worth of data on the gold market, but I have enough uh, twenty three weeks. When you look at gold versus the other markets we're trading, it's all within lines of the statistical probability. So I have no problem taking a shot in gold based on statistics and our probability models. So uh, right now we've got the bottom picker model, which says that um, you know we're uh, we're in an area where it can rally from. What we need to see right now is we need to see momentum turn up. We need to see white on this indicator, which indicates momentum's turning up. And we could get us a rally out of here. Um, that's all we're waiting for. Everything is at an extreme. Everything is. So what this says is, hey, you're in an area. Now, we've been in an area for quite some time. This could have tricked us. If It could have very easily tricked us out um, if we were uh, looking at gold back in here. Yeah, everything met the criteria to take a shot. Sometimes, guys, it just doesn't work out. Um, but we, we took a shot back in here. Uh, betting on long gold and now what I want to do is take a shot that gold is going to stay within one standard deviation 
over the course of the next, uh, we'll call it eight or nine trading days. So what I want to do is I want to try to capitalize on that and put a trade on uh, to keep it inside of one standard deviation and use the least amount of money possible. So that means I'm not going to trade a string. Uh, that means more than likely what I'm going to do is buy either at the money, not at the money, but I'm going to buy a bullish and a bearish uh, butterfly or I'm going to buy uh, a bullish a bearish calendar spread. I'm not going to go into the trades right now. I'm just going to highlight what I'm going to try to do. Try to structure the trade to stay inside of one standard deviation because uh, we know that our statistics say that they stay with inside one standard deviation 69% of the time. So we want to try and capitalize on that. It's worth taking a shot. It's just probabilities, guys. It's all it is. So if we can do that and risk very little money, uh, put us into a trade that we can adjust with a little bit of money, because uh, we know that um, if this market makes a run, uh, it's still 90% of the time it's going to stay within two standard deviations. So I want to put a trade on where I can at least defend it at the two standard deviation level. So that limits me to uh, bullish and bearish calendar spreads or bullish and bearish uh, butterflies. Um, I've looked at... Uh, I've looked at the broken wing butterflies. I don't like it on this trade right here. Uh, it's not what I'm trying to capture. So, so anyway, I'll keep you updated on that tonight when the uh, gold futures opens. Uh, we'll take a look at it, give the options time to settle down and get those bid ass spreads a little bit tighter, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. But uh, um, anytime we get inside this window, where uh, the well the S and P's got uh, options on it every week. Um, you know, I need to take a look, start taking a look at the NASDAQ. The uh, NASDAQ futures, uh, let's pull that up right quick. Yeah, NASDAQ futures is, uh, of course, the IV and NASDAQ futures will always be more than the S&P because it always moves a lot more, but I need to really start paying attention to that one because now they have weekly options in NASDAQ futures. I haven't traded those yet, so I don't have any idea how they trade, how the bid-ask spreads are. Uh, but I am going to start watching those a little bit more closely. Um, I like including some weekly plays in, so we'll, we'll take, start taking a look at those. All right, guys, that's all I have for right now. Um, the last thing that I want to cover, uh, yeah, before I before I go is uh, you know I like this right here this is uh, really good I was really scared I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at that one update I put out but minus this day we had the Nasdaq uh, with two really tight bars after this big run up typically guys that is a very bullish setup um, but I like the fact that we trickled down. Now all we need is some, you know, more downward action. It will completely negate that little setup right there. If we get another update um, on Monday, yeah, I'm going to say this was a fake, fake out to the downside. Just typical action on an expiration Friday. And hey, this is important. Let me cover this because um, that action on Friday, that that's typically what happens. Uh, if you would ask me years ago, what was a play in on a Friday, a triple witching Friday expiration? And every trader that's been watching this stuff for decades will tell you the same thing. They're going to open them up, and then they're going to get close to lunchtime and sell them off. That was classic market action, that uh, typical behavior of the stock market under normal circumstances. So... Uh, all of this phony stuff we've been seeing here the last couple of years is completely manipulated, uh, Fed-induced, um, psychotic, psychopathic trading behavior that I don't know if it's really governed by algorithmic trading or what is uh, causing it, but, uh, but it is definitely not the same S&P 500 that I've watched trade for decades and decades. So... Um, anyway, I just wanted to call that into attention that, that that move Friday, that was very typical behavior.
The week was very typical going into a December expiration. So that was about as classic as you'll get. And that's what I always refer to as my, you know, the December bet. That no matter what happens going into that expiration week, you're going to get higher prices. And Friday played out just like it did in the playbook. So anyway, I've got a scan that I'll show you uh, for penny stocks. So let's see. Um, Let's see what we come up with here. Yeah, so here's one that, that popped up. Um, So it's a Digitrade Financial Corporation. No idea what they make, but it came up on one of my my penny stock scan. So uh, uh, we had a little bit of volume coming into it. Um, yeah, we had a little bit of volume coming into it Friday, coming off of those lows right there. Quite a bit of volume uh, relative to the average daily volume. And as you can see, this area right here, there's some activity taking place. That's what I like to look for in penny stocks. Uh, those low stocks that are reaching reaching down, they're making, making new lows, and all of a sudden you get some buying activity that spurs them on. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Oh, this thing hasn't been trading very long. Huh. Okay, it's penny, guys. Maybe it's worth a you know 10,000 share shot. Who knows? Um, I might I might put uh, put an offer in at around a penny, see what we come up with for Monday. Uh, let's see what the uh, what the average volume. Let's see if we get any three million shares traded uh, traded Friday. So um, might be worth a shot. Hey, uh, traded up to uh, traded up to a dollar just a few days ago. Um, who really knows? Yeah, I think I'll put an order in by ten or twenty thousand shares. This maybe twenty thousand Monday at a penny. So uh, anyway, I just want to show you the uh, scan that I've got. I'll keep running this. Um, it's a fun little thing. You never know. I mean, you, you never know when you might hit one that uh, that takes off. It's a number. Playing penny stocks is a numbers game. It's like uh, it's the very same thing as lottery trades in the options market. Those low probability of shots so uh, just treated it as such anyway that's the penny stock trade for the day uh, we've got the short in Delta Airlines and we you know kinda of what I'm looking to do in gold uh, over the next eight or nine trading days so as soon as I figure out the trade structure on what I'm gonna do I'll put that out and if you guys want to ride along you can remember if you don't want to trade in the futures market uh, you can put the trade on in GLD, do the same thing I'm doing, and you will get the same bang for your buck. Um, so I, I just prefer staying in the futures market if the bid asks are uh, are really tight in that issue. So I haven't traded gold a whole lot on the options side. Typically it's very liquid, but, uh, but we'll take a look at it and see. It's much more liquid in GLD than it is in the futures market. I will tell you that. That much I do know. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. So this is uh, BA wishing you guys happy Sunday, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next update. BA signing out.